Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima. I'm recording this a bit later at night as I did before with my video of A Boy and His Blob, but oh well, we'll deal. So this is Lego Marvel's Avengers, or as it says here, Lego Marvel Avengers. It's like three completely different logos, just contrasting with- anyway, I don't care, so. Sorry. So, this game came out actually pretty early today, at least today as in is currently Tuesday at 10pm for me and came out like seven hours ago, so. It's actually kind of convenient, and I've got two hours in this save game so far, and I'm at 27%, so I like the thing that's good for first impressions. First impressions which aren't entirely positive. It's gonna sound like I'm complaining about this game a lot, but... Really, it's nothing more than just... painstakingly average? That's basically what I've got, like, that's my entire opinion on this game in a nutshell. But... I know, I understand a lot of people like this series, so I'll do my best to be fair to it, but this is coming from a guy who burned out on LEGO like five years ago, and considering how the state of PS Vita ports have been recently on the LEGO series, you know, I can, I can please understand the fact that I kind of went in with a bit of a negative Nancy vibe about me about this, but was somewhat surprised, but at the same time wasn't. I'll just get into the game, but... First things first, you got audio options and you got subtitles. I'd recommend turning this on immediately because the audio quality in this game goes from perfectly reasonable to sounds like I'm watching a filmed copy so, of the film Marvel, um, of the Avengers film. So, yeah, you might want to go sort that out immediately. There's also cheat codes, but for live me, I don't know what cheat codes there would be for this game. And you do have a gallery which lets you check out both the trading cards and the in-game movies, but I'll be going and playing the next stage in the main set of the game already, so in, in the main set, in the main game, so it's not like it matters. So this, there will be spoilers, like, somewhat for the first Avengers film, but if you haven't seen that, it's been like three years and everybody went and saw that movie in the, in the cinema, and if you didn't, you probably saw it on DVD, and even then, you've probably seen it because you're probably picking up this game for it, but anyway, let's just hit continue and I can just stop whining. So, why am I back on the helicarrier? I was down in Manhattan. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the helicarrier though. It's too small. That's basically what I got for it. It's it's meant to be like a se second hub world, but it is the smallest hub world I've ever seen in a video game. Or at least the smallest thing that's meant to serve as one, but... Oh well. <laughs> Convenient. We can watch this little clip here. I'm gonna guess this is like one of those... Last time on LEGO Marvel's Avengers things that happened when you load the game. I'm a little surprised this showed up, to be honest. But yeah, it's still got that traditional LEGO humor and charm to it, and the cutscenes usually sound alright, which is weird. Agent Coulson is down. Guess he never did get you to sign them. There was an idea. Stark knows this. Called the Avengers Initiative. The idea was to bring together a group of remarkable people. See if they could become something more. <laughs> Phil Coulson died still believing in that idea. In heroes. I'm not marching a Fury's Fife. Neither am I. Right now, we got to put that behind us and get this. This done. is pre-rendered, by the way. This is Hello, not Peter Three D. Good put together a list. He made it personal. He wants to beat us. He wants to be seen doing it. He wants an audience. This is this is opening night, and Loki. He's a full tilt diva. He's still he alive. Let's parade. He wants a monument. He's he not with alive in the plastic. film. <laughs> a bit weird. I'm sorry. I didn't notice that the first time around. That actually got me off guard, but. Yeah, the humor's still there, and it is a pretty effective retelling to the point where they actually got, like, the audio from the movie and put it in, and I imagine, like, at the halfway point it'll swap to Avengers 2, or maybe it won't, I'm not sure, but... Either way, it's still actually kind of a nice retelling, but at the same time, 
is just a bit weird because it doesn't do a very good job of explaining itself if you haven't seen the movie. But anyway, so here we are. That's the way to the next story mission. I'm not going to do that just yet because I want to actually fall down to Manhattan and show off Manhattan first. But if we, we can just go have a look around here real quick. And this is the Helicarrier, which is the sort of second hub world. But it has pretty much everything that the... It has um, nothing that Manhattan doesn't show us. So we're going to go down to Manhattan. You want to know how we do that? I'm not even joking. Let's try that again. I'm, I'm not even joking. This is how you get to Manhattan. Like, you fall forever. I thought the game had bugged. I swear to Christ that worked the first time. Alright, so I'm going to have to go and swap to another character. So you can pick multiple characters and they all have different abilities. Like, I didn't have Iron Man, which is a bit weird because he can usually fly out of here. And, oh wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Right, I was in the middle of a mission, that makes sense. So, now I should be able to take a flying leap off the edge of the... <laughs> that was embarrassing, but yeah, now I should be able to take a flying leap off the edge. This a I actually fell for like 30 seconds or something. Well, it's not 30 seconds, but it was pretty long, and I thought the game had gone glitched out on me. But no, if you jump off the top of the helicarrier, you just fall straight back to Manhattan, which is actually kind of inconvenient. So yeah, you can see all the challenges you've got to do here, but... Most of these challenges aren't actually that enjoyable. We'll get to that, but... Some of these I haven't actually found yet, like... Hydroways? I spent like five minutes looking around for one of them. I could not find one. Uh, the Bard on target hit 15 Hawkeye targets. I found like three of them, but I haven't got Hawkeye yet. And I don't know of any other characters that I can actually unlock. That, that, can, that can actually shoot those targets, which is really annoying, honestly. But anyway. So, um, here we are in Manhattan. And... It is actually surprisingly impressive. Like, for a Vita game, I mean... Usually in Vita games, you have to have one or more restrictions on your game in order to make an open world like this work. One, the draw distance has got to be super short, which is kind of true. This is, like, PlayStation 2 sub-PlayStation 2 level, but, you know, not that big of a deal, all things considered. Or you can, like, drop the frame rate to something ridiculously low, or you can make everything pop in and out, and... Well, they do have some weird pop in, but anyway. You do have multiple characters. You can go as many of the Avengers, and the way you unlock them is you get them as collectibles in the game. So, in the main missions, and there are some hidden around the city. Like, one of the sub the side missions I went to had the, had the character I needed for it right next to it. But anyway. So, I'm not going to be Iron Man, because Iron Man can't use... Well, actually, he can use vehicles now, I think about it. But I actually do like Iron Man, because, you know, he can fly by himself. But flying in this game is a little wonky. It's a lot better when you're in a vehicle. In this, it's just surprisingly twitchy. But anyway, we're gonna get a vehicle, because why not? Because this is, like, this is how you demonstrate games. And we can actually get Thanos' chair, which is a ridiculous craft, because not only does it have nitrous, it has a fucking horn. I don't even know why. But anyway, so we're here in Manhattan, and Manhattan is the game's, what purports to be the game's open world. And there are several things you can do around here. There are Marvel landmarks, which as you can see, I just found one of them and I don't even know what it was. Like, I've found 10 of them and I haven't even noticed. So, I've been around this hub world enough to find 10 of the bloody things and I still haven't found one of the hideaways for the Hydra opponents, which is, which makes me think that either it's not in the game yet, like they haven't actually like spawned it in the world or I'm just completely blind. Excuse me. But anyway, this is one of the side missions. They're a little bit different from the regular missions you find lying around. Like, the one I found was Doctor Strange, and he, I had to go and save his sidekick Wiccan, and then just, like, beat the shit out of some ghosts, which was a little weird. But, yeah, that happened. And that was, like, five minutes long, and it didn't really bring me that much joy at all. But, yeah. So, that's a side mission. Now, if we hop back in here, I can go show off the other two types of missions. But as the challenge you saw in the challenge menu earlier, You've got gold statues to destroy, you've got seven Captain America trading cards, you've got Hawkeye targets, and you've got things you can go build and all that, which are all explained in the main game, and they're basically just get the right character to the right place and do their specific ability with them, which is... It's not as fun as it sounds, trust me. But anyway, I'm stuck. Hang on, there we go. Why am I flying around a giant chair? I will never know. But anyway... So, this is one of the mission types you can get down here. It's Smash Challenge, Wreck and Parks. They have different names, obviously, and they have a different amount of gold you need to get to. 
I need to pick another character to go with this, and I know just the guy. There are, you unlock your other characters, which is a little strange, by paying for them with studs. Like, I don't think you can buy anything else with studs. I don't think there's anything else you get. You just, yeah, you just have to buy them with studs, and they cost a ton of studs, like a hundred grand worth of studs. I've only gotten like 700,000 so far, so I can't imagine how many it's going to cost to unlock everybody in this lineup. It's going to be a little bit ridiculous. But anyway, so if we start the Smash Challenge, we're given a time limit and we're given a score limit. And the idea is, all these obje all these little you objects here, they can be smashed to pieces. And when you smash die. them, you get studs out of them and you've got to get as many studs as possible. However, if you're someone like the Hulk, these challenges are stupid easy because all you need to do is find your way to the nearest road and run over all the cars in your path. Because they will continue to spawn in your way and there's... But that's basically it. Like, that, this is literally the easiest way to do these challenges. And all of these challenges are exactly the same concept. You just have to beat the shit out of everything with your... Just, well, beat the shit out of everything with anyone you like. But to be fair, with Hulk, you literally just need to hold the circle button and just run into everything you see and you will finish it. And there are no, like, there's no other variants on this challenge. It literally just changes your starting position. So you could literally just... It doesn't matter where you go, as long as you can find your way back to a road, that's it, you're done. Well done. So yeah. I've got the gold needed for gold, and I've got 30 seconds left, so there's really no point in me continuing unless I want more studs. Also, there's the Hulk's Magnificent Leap, but again, this is really completely useless, because you can literally just swap out the Iron Man and fly wherever you want at any time you like, which is a... Which again is a little bit disappointing, I was hoping that it would be a little bit harder to fly around the sea, like you own it, but... Oh well, right? I mean, you can deal with pretty much any other character as well. It's just with Iron Man, you literally just select him, double tap X, and away you go. But yeah, that's it. That's that's the that's that kind of challenge, basically. Let me show you the other one once the time runs out. You have and as you can see, you unlock more characters by doing these as well. There are also characters you can find by unlocking them via the what's it called, the main missions. So if I just put down here on the Avengers Mansion, we can race through the stud spheres. And it's exactly the same bloody thing. Every time, it's literally just flying through rings. It's Superman 64 nightmares all over again. Except this, these controls are actually pretty bad, so... Uh, not great. Probably would have been smarter to get a more... Yeah, as I'm hoping I'm not making anyone motion sick with this, but yeah. It's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? It's, um... And this is basically it, too. Like, you have so many different bloody kinds of these challenges. There's like 10 scattered around Manhattan, and they're all just this. There's no variety. You don't get, like, forced into a specific vehicle to make it more interesting. You just literally pick the best character you've got for the job, and away you go. Same deal with the Smash challenges. And that's, like, the majority of the activities you can find in Manhattan, which is extremely disappointing, might I add. Like... I was hoping for a more fleshed out world, but I guess I don't get it. Which is, again, just disappointing because, I mean, you've got the Avengers, they've all got these massive amounts of, of abilities, and you've got the license to like hundreds of Marvel superheroes, and the best you can think of is destroy everything in a given radius, which really doesn't make sense considering it's meant to be a superhero game, and... I'm, I'm, oh, yeah, I'm guessing that you're meant to do this without either a specific vehicle or not fuck it up like I did because the time's already gone silver. Which is, yeah, again, it's just weird. Like, the best things you can come up with are fly through rings or. So it's either fly through rings or destroy shit, which again doesn't really make any what, sense because. Wow, you were slow. You're, you're meant to be superheroes. Like, what's the point? Like, I can understand it making some kind of sense. There's a Captain America trading card, by the way. I'll just pop up on screen. Need a little art, but oh well. I'm not that impressed by it, honestly. Excellent. Thought I'd lost this forever. And this this is actually the next story mission, so it's kind of convenient I ended up here. But yeah, I'm actually thoroughly disappointed in this open world, if you can even call it that. The majority of the activities here are just boring, honestly, like, sure, it's fun the first time you do them, but five minutes, five minutes and repeating the same challenge like three times except starting in different locations starts to get boring, and there's like 12 of them, so yeah, 
And then all the other things really just amount to go to a specific area, get your specific character out and do what they do best. And it's it just doesn't have any sort of like meaningful variety to make things interesting. That's what the main story missions are for, at least I imagine that's the point. So let's actually go and get into this main story mission here. I'll give the game credit though. Except for like the smash missions where you hit a bunch of objects in a row, the game's frame rate is actually alright, but... Yeah, that draw distance. <laughs> Spider-Man on the PlayStation 2, you can see all the way to the other end of Manhattan. In this, you just... Man. So yeah, it's taking me back to the helicarrier, but it doesn't matter because it will... <laughs> Sorry, I just got a bunch of stuff up my nose. Um... <laughs> But yeah, it'll um, give me the mission objective I need to do. Generally, you need to spend a bit pissing around outside of the actual missions before they'll let you go anywhere unique. And also, it's making me see this again? Really? What's the point? Like, I can't skip this. I really don't see the point. This actually happened to me last time as well. Like, I was... The first time I got on the helicopter, I tried doing one of the, um... The side missions that were on there. And I got it done, and then it immediately put me through the cutscene and stuck me in the mission again. I had to tell it to go out of the mission. Which is, like, weird. I don't understand why it's so insistent on making me see this. Coulson is down. Like, sure, they put a lot of work into them, but this is the third time I've seen this, so what's the point? Guess he never did get you to sign them. There was an idea. Stark knows this. Why is he signing them? <laughs> called the Avengers Initiative. I will admit, some of the humor the related some of the, to some of the story points is actually kind of funny. Like, people. in the mission where you have to, See like, it hack the helicarrier, more. like, it's part of the plot in the Avengers movie, they have to hack the helicarrier to figure something out. I can't remember what it was off the top of my head, but, yeah, they had idea. to figure out where something, um, where something was, and you have to literally blow up a command console and then build a, an arcade machine out of it, which is a little bit of a funny back to the film because you can see the guy playing Gallagher, which is admittedly that joke's only funny once, us but this still. They've got these weird little callbacks to the source media, media which personal. makes, you, makes me enjoy them a fair bit. Doing it. At least What's the presentation is, wise, is there are some really and weird and story look, things that you have to do, like diva. in the part where Iron Man and Thor and Captain America are all fighting, one of the segments as Iron Man has you getting the shit knocked out of you and you get thrown back into a bit of forest clearing. And in the forest clearing, you have to blow up some things attached to a power converter so that you can use the things you blew up to build a car which run into a bunch of burning trees that you couldn't fly over because you're Iron Man. And instead of like cutting down the trees, the vehicle explodes and takes the trees with them. It makes no sense from a gameplay standpoint. It makes no sense from a story standpoint. It's just dumb. But anyway, now that we're back up here, we should be able to go on on the mission, and we should be able to steal this. Whoa! Hey, stop right there! Keep back! I have orders from Director Fury Hang to on, fire. I'm solve Either this. that, or he said I should be. So every character does have a unique fire? ability, and remember. Black Widow's. But I'm playing it safe and assuming it's the first one. No one's allowed on or off the ship. Black Widow's special ability. Ability. If I press an old circle. Invisible. Whoa! Hey, stop Apparently right there! Not. Keep back! So what's this doing here? Oh, that makes sense. Now, it's another way back from that like <gasps> silly cream. Come on. Cut. If anyone asks why we left our posts, we'll tell them we thought we heard an alarm. That 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 was an oddly weird puzzle like really should notice that was there me we're talking about but anyway so we should be going off to the actual mission now and the actual missions are also kind of disappointing they are roughly five to ten minutes long each why is Iron Man so upset there's the edge but yeah so the actual minutes, missions are 5 to 10 minutes long and they take place in their own little cutout areas and when I can eventually get around to them I'll be able to tell you about them but for some goddamn reason they just insist on having me do this for this bloody long so
1700 distance away. Alright, I'll be right back. Alright, now that I'm back, please, for the love of God. Okay, thank God. So, the Battle of New York. The idea is, these small stages each take about 5 to 10 minutes. And they have five objectives, as we can see here. Two unique ones for the... Two unique ones for the uh, last two. And then the first three will always find all three collectibles, collect X amount of studs, and complete the level. The level, as I said before, the levels usually last five to ten minutes, so it's actually very the hard. This is already self-sustaining. The barrier is pure energy. It's unbreachable. Yeah, I got that. Plan B. So the Mark 7 is not ready for deployment. Then skip the spinning rims, we're on the clock. <laughs> but yeah, so... The levels are very short. Very, very short. So any collectibles you do see... Uh, if any, any collectibles you don't see are actually very easy to find uh, because there's very few friend. areas for them to be. What have I to fear? The Avengers. I have an army. We have a Hulk. How will your friends have time for me? When they're so busy fighting you. This usually works. Not uncommon. Jarvis? Troy! Jarvis? Now, this is the beginning of one of the mission set pieces. Now, a lot of these missions actually have set pieces like this, and they're actually kind of cool. Like, there are ones where you'll go, like, flying backwards, and there are ones where you'll, you know, fly forwards, obviously, and... There's this one really cool set piece, like the second level, where you're in a car the whole time and you're trying to fight Loki as he's trying to escape from base, which is actually kind of cool, but they don't come nearly often enough. And then you get, like... Right. Hmm. Army. Lots of cutscenes, but then again, I guess this is the end of the... This is the end of the second... This is the end of the first film, so it's... Not as... Also, yeah, as you can see there, I got one of the collectibles. And there are, these sections are actually pretty cool, it's just, they last for so little time. It would be nice if I could do these just a little bit more often, but, eh, uh, you know the way these things go. Hello, beastie. And as you can see, it's counting up my progress towards the challenge down the bottom left there. And the game is, and the kit is having a fit. There we go. I, well, I died. Fantastic. Hang on, kid's having a fit, come on. Pull yourself out of it. There, that should be better. Stop, he see this? See, still working on believing. Where's Banner? Is he showing up yet? Banner? We've got civilians trapped up here. Loki. They're fishing a barrel down there. There's usually not this many cutscenes. It's a little bit surprising, honestly. I actually killed 14 of them. It wasn't enough, unfortunately, but... Oh well. So, oh, there we go. Apparently we've got a defense of civilians, but yeah. So now that we're on the ground, I can demonstrate the combat a little better. The combat in this game is just press square. That's really all there is to it. Most of the enemies don't require any more strategy than that. Just press square until the enemies die. That's it. You can swap between characters, and again, they can all do specific things. And... They also have these team-up abilities, but they do not come into play anywhere near often enough. Like, you can do this. That's literally used once in the whole game at the moment, and then nothing happens. Like, they're only meant for very specific use in these missions, and oh dear. I need to be Captain America for this. This Captain America can deflect anything. At least I thought he could. There we go. Thank you. Damn, Beth. Uh-oh. I've only got six minutes until I get a parking ticket. Easy, girl. Easy. We just got you out of the bloody wrecked wreck building and you're worried about parking tickets? Yeah, Blue, explain the joke. That's perfect for you. You're completely useless to us pop. But anyway. So, yeah. 
the stages are just basically this. They're just small encompassed arenas where you just bash a square on these guys when they show up and and just like yeah they fall over and die you don't even need to do that like this see if i'm holding circle and just run into them instant hey, kill in here, and, and look agent barton's quiver has a trick arrow for almost every occasion courtesy of shield Books. you're welcome just aim and fire at what you want to blow up and the quiver will do the rest thank you I almost had to read a regular book. Yeesh. You think you can hold him off? Hey! I'm still on the bus! I fell asleep! Captain. Be my genuine pleasure. Did everyone else get on a replacement service? Yeah, there's... Alright, um... Did I? Why do I have to be... Oh. Right, okay, yeah. Now, yeah, it's actually coming to play when I say it doesn't come into play often enough. Fantastic. Uh, but yeah, these stages are just short, and they do have collectibles, but again, you just, you won't miss them, not very often. Um, what am I supposed to do here again? I can't attack him, so I have to be... Get over here. Right, so how do we get across these? Aha. Uh -huh. Makes sense. Now up the uh there we go. There it is very simple puzzles like that to solve and not much else to it really. I'll give it again credit, at least it looks pretty nice. Like, in these little missions here, it looks pretty damn good, like, considering all the areas are just all small and self-contained. When you're out in the open world, though, it's not that impressive. It look, it's all a bit lifeless and unpleasant, if I, if I were to be perfectly honest. What a weird little device. Oh, hang on. There we go. Whoa! If I just stand here. Thanks. Oh man, we're nowhere near my stop. Taxi. <laughs> and here comes the goal. Ow, ow, ow. Screw you. But again, this is really easy. You just like I can literally just run around with my shield like this and any regular enemies that try and kill me or just, like, basically die. But I actually have to be Hawkeye because... Thank you! I have to be Hawkeye because I believe he's the only one who can do this. Hang on. Where's Captain America? Oh, there we go. Also, I've noticed that it's actually really easy to collect studs in this game. Like, so easy that you'll end up being, you'll end up being, like, full on studs at the halfway mark without even trying, which is surprising, honestly. Like, you can just beat up a bunch of random objects along the way and you'll get to your maximum studs and not have to worry about it. I don't know if the, the levels in these games are really short on purpose, or if it's... Alright, why do I have to beat you again? What am I doing this time? Agent Romanov right. is equipped with now stealth the stealth mode actually comes in useful. Couldn't use the stealth mode to get on the jet without being spotted, but now I can use it to sneak past. Yeah. And what do I do once I'm over here? Maybe we should have this car, and I assume I'm going to use that to build some wacky gadget that'll bring this guy way off his... Oh, I could just rebuild a fire hose. That works. There we go. There we go. Let me guess, another combat section? Yep. Swap to Captain America. There. Right. It's just so simple. Like, 
The last LEGO game I can I can actually remember, not vaguely remember, but actually remember was LEGO Star Wars. And those games feel like they really had a lot of time and attention poured into them. This game feels like it had the same, but a lot less time. It just seems like they just ran out of time making this because everything's so short. The open world activities are surprisingly just empty and the massive amount of potential you have working with like almost every superhero that Marvel has ever invented. And this was the best that came up with. It's just a little bit disappointing if you want me to be honest. Here comes Thor. What's the story upstairs? The power surrounding the cube is impenetrable. Thor's right. We gotta deal with these guys. How do we do this? As a team. Yeah, hear this audio quality? It's a bit weird. But anyway, now I'm Thor. Who, weirdly enough, does not kill everybody with one smack of this bloody electric hammer that the Hulk couldn't lift up. I don't know why. You, do, you can do this though, which is like a sort of electronic shockwave that makes you zappy. I'm not even going to claim to know what that's about. Uh, Hawkeye, just out of curiosity, can you blow up the skull statue? Yes, so most of the shooting segments, as soon as you get Hawkeye, it's not like it matters. What the hell am I even making here? See, like, why couldn't I do anything interesting with these generators? Or at least, it doesn't look like I could do anything interesting with these generators in the open world. Oh, right. There we go. Funny thing is, I already had to do something similar in the, um... in a boss fight with Hulk, so... It's... Not like I wouldn't have known how to do that in the first place. Also, why did you come here on a bloody so, motorbike? This all seems horrible. I've seen worse. Stuck. We got I'm surprised at how long this level is. This is the longest no, level that there's been in the game so far. Every other level's ended worse. easier like than this. Said, tell him to suit up. I'm bringing the party to you. I, I don't see how that's a party. God, this video's gonna be like 35 minutes, even with that's editing. Bad. Now might be a really good time for you to get angry. That's my secret, Captain. I'm always angry. We're the bad dude. We're talking about this. No, I actually do have to do the we're talking about this. But I will admit, for a fully rendered 3D game on the Vita, this actually does look pretty nice. Weird, but if you insist. Yeah, that's a level basically. It's just tiny couple of puzzles in between the beginning and the end, and yeah, that's basically all it has. It's just the levels are just the same thing over and over again, honestly. Like the puzzles are very simple, the combat is extremely easy, and I guess I understand why people like it, but at the same time, it's just not clicking with me, like, not in the slightest. I'll give it credit though, it does feel like a little bit more of a LEGO game, but at the same time I'm still admittedly disappointed with it. Like, LEGO Star Wars, the complete saga, was like the absolute pinnacle of the series in my personal opinion, and... Oh, uh, let me guess. Call it, Captain. Barton, I want you on that roof. Eyes on everything. Call out patterns and strays. Stark, you got the perimeter. Anything gets more than three blocks out, you turn it back or you turn it to ash. Can you give me a lift? Right. Better go watch out, Legolas. Thor. Try and that point. Yeah, this is a um. He got the lightning. Yeah, they do tend to put you straight into another mission, which is a little bit annoying, honestly. 
smash. I'm gonna I'm gonna get put straight into another mission, aren't I? Like it's not gonna let me take a break. You can repeat previous missions, but because you have to in order to get all the collectibles. Because sometimes they lock them behind doors that some characters can't open. But yeah, I'm just waiting for this to end so I can pull this video off. Anyway, oh, we are actually in the. Oh right, so we can actually just like. No, we cannot exit the mission at the moment. But I'm going to just, like, pause and go back to the main menu, because I don't really give a toss anymore. That was a look at LEGO Marvel's Avengers. Thoroughly average in pretty much every way, if you want me to be perfectly honest with you. It's got mostly average puzzles, average level design, average, uh, well, well design, like, the character design, in, in any sense, interesting. And it's just a bit dull, but then again... I haven't been a fan of the series for years, just because it seems to be too rushed to be relatively fleshed out like the Star Wars ones were, so I don't really know what to think. But I wouldn't recommend spending 30 bucks on it if you are asking me personally. Wait until it goes on sale. I mean, like, 10 to 15 bucks was something you could pick up and just go through in a weekend. Doesn't sound like a bit of a bad deal to me, but at full price, wouldn't recommend it. This has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.